Hello, it's Molly here from Ponder and Ply. Um, it's been a hot minute, so I have not recorded since I gave up on my Christmas vlog posts. Um, sorry about that guys. So my plan going forward is something a bit more manageable and something that I think I can actually keep to. So as a bare minimum, I'm aiming to do one episode a month. And in that, I'm going to cover everything I made the month before, everything I cast on the month before, even if it's not finished yet, and then my plans for the next month. Um, and also then anything I've picked up along the way um, that I want to show you, like stash acquisitions, that kind of style stuff. Um, this is much more man manageable for me. I am working full time, even in the craziness of the world at the moment. And um, I know I'm very lucky, by the way, that I have a job that I'm able to do from home. I know people are in a lot worse situations than me, but it means that I do not have any extra time on my hands. Um, yes. Okay, so I guess that I'll get started then. Oh, one last thing I wanted to add. I'm using my phone instead of the camera because the camera makes this weird, like, focusy noise and it really drives me mad. So I am... Probably, I'm trying to look at where the camera is, like the the point that the camera is, but I keep on looking at the middle of the camera, so my eyes are going to be all over the place until I get used to it. But that's what we're going to do for now. So as I mentioned already, um, the world's gone crazy. We are in the apocalypse. I am not going to be focusing this, th focusing on this in any shape or form um, in these videos because I feel like we hear enough about it in the news at the moment. Um, but I just want to say that I'm living my best slob life. I am, I was made to, made for this. I am the biggest slob there is. Um, perfect example, the other day I decided to do a hair mask. Do you know one of those hair masks you put in after you've had a shower, leave them for an hour and then wash them out again? So I still had that in my hair three days later. I've worn pretty much the same couple of outfits for about three weeks now. Um, I batch made some cookies and ate them in one sitting. I mean, I was made for this. The hoodie that I'm wearing a lot of the time when I get cold in the house has got like toothpaste down it. Um, washed my hair for you guys today, so you're welcome. Okay, so let's start with everything that I finished in the month of... N I nearly said May. See, I don't even know what day, I don't even know what day of the week it is, I don't know what month it is, I don't know anything. Um, I'm going to tell you, so this is all about March 2020. Welcome to the Molly Makes of March 2020. So one of the first things I finished in March, which some of you may have already seen on my Instagram, um, is the Ripple Butt Shorts. Uh, this is a pattern I test knitted for Jessie May. Jessie is a fabulous designer. If you don't know who she is, go and check her out. Um, if you sort of have a flick back through my grid, you will see that I test knit for her more than I test knit for anyone else. Um, I feel like her designs are really easy to wear. Um, they're really well written and you can make them your own. They're quite classic uh, and not too fussy. Um, and that allows you to, to do whatever you want with them. So these, I chose a beautiful sunshine yellow. Um, so I had a few things going on in my personal life that meant I was a bit sad. Uh, I'm not gonna delve into that too much, but um, I chose this sunshine yellow to make me happy. And every time I picked it up, um, it did, it worked. I felt really, really happy. Um, and I feel happy when I'm wearing them. I felt so, so happy that I wore them all the time until I managed to get a massive bloody mark on them. I don't know what it is, I don't know how I managed it. It looks like it could come off quite easily but it's a little bit sticky. I need to give it a bit of a wash. So suspicious sticky object on my shore, sticky mark on my shorts. Delicious. Okay so a little bit more about the pattern. Um, I used a DK weight, I think I just bought from Paintbox Yarns, it was super cheap, I think it was less than three quid. Um, I used almost the whole ball. I had a little bit left over. I made a size three or a medium. Um, I pretty much consistently make that size in Jessie's patterns. I have roughly 38 inch hips and a 26 inch waist. Um, so I always match up my hip measurements. And then this features a drawstring, which means you can make it as tiny around the waist as you like, which is uh, 
really helpful. Um, I'll pop in a couple of pictures if I haven't already for you to see what they look like on. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed making this pattern, 100% recommend. I think they're coming out second week of April, so they should be out in the next couple of weeks. Keep an eye on Jessie's Instagram for that. Um, now, after I finished these, I thought I really wanted to make a matching top to go with it. So I made the Ripple Bralette in a slightly lighter shade of yellow. Actually, let me show you the other one together. So Jessie did this on her sample knit and um, when she advertised it that she had a lighter pink top and darker pink bottom and I loved it so much that I wanted to recreate it in yellow. Um, so what can I say about this pattern? I was very, very fortunate. I messaged Jessie and said I need um, this pattern before it's released so that I can take some nice photos and uh, my pillow fight photos this is just a little funny idea I had I wanted to make like a little pajama look set although I would definitely wear these outside not that it's ever warm, up, warm enough in London and um, so I, I was super lucky and she sent me the pattern before it was released um, please don't go and ask her for the pattern before it's released she doesn't usually do this it's just I test it a lot so this is essentially a last minute test knit for her um, it fits super well I've made the fingering rate uh, fingering weight fingering. That word amuses me beyond end every time I say it. I'm just going to search for some fingering weight yarn. Um, anyway, so I, yes, I knitted this up. Again, like the shorts, it took me less than two days of knitting to make each one. This was even quicker than the shorts. Very well written, fits exactly like the fingering weight one. Obviously, it's a little bit heavier. Um, super happy with it. Uh, would definitely make some more, they're just super handy to have under things or as little crop tops in the summer. Um, that kind of leads me on to the elephant in the room, what I am wearing. Um, so let me just pop that down. I decided after making both of those patterns that I wanted to make a ripple romper. Um, I was calling it a ripple play suit which is more what you would call this in the UK um, but Ripple Romper someone said it online and I think that just it's the, the alliteration just gets me I love it so what I did is I mashed together the bralette pattern with the shorts pattern and um, just to clarify this is not a pattern by Jessie yet maybe she's got something in the works I don't know I'm not privy to that information um but I have included full notes on my Ravelry page so I made a medium in the bottoms and again in the top that made it a lot much easier for me to mash these patterns together there is a stitch count difference um but I went with the larger stitch count which is for the shorts and um if you can see here I decreased out um the stitches and um, maybe I will if there's a um, much need for it if anyone is interested I would be happy to do a video on what I did and um, but like I said the uh, notes were on my Ravelry pattern page projects page not pattern page um, this one I made in worsted so the one thing that I found making it in DK I'm generally a very loose knitter um, and these shorts were a tiny bit see-through so I have a big dark tattoo on my ass ass so side note ass as in the american ass sounds so much better but it sounds really stupid when i say it with my accent ass sounds quite rude and just vulgar really um but i can pull that one off with my accent so i'm gonna say oh sorry i don't even shave my armpit um <laughs> distracted myself there so Yes, I'm gonna go with arse. So I've got a big black tattoo on my arse and through the yellow and my slightly looser gauge, you could see it, which isn't the end of the world. Um, but if I wanna wear these out, I thought, oh, let me try a worsted weight. And actually I've managed to make this not see-through. Only thing I would say is with it being slightly thicker, the waistband here, which is doubled over on itself and has an eye cord through it, adds a little bit of extra bulk with the worsted weight. The DK is still quite light and this is a bit thick. Let's see if I can stand up and show you guys a little bit. It's not the best angle for this. I have taken some photos so I can 
pop those on but if you can see here um sorry guys nice shot of my ass but you can see that you can't see through it even though i've got this big tattoo underneath whereas with the yellow you can see the whole thing and um, you're welcome for that little shot there uh yes okay so that's the ripple romper um yeah keep an eye out i'll be posting you actually you'll see it here first my plan is to get this up before i post pictures of it on instagram so you got the preview guys um yes okay last thing that i finished in march as you can see i actually did a fair amount of knitting considering i didn't have any extra time um is a new design of mine um you may have seen already i've got a really wonderful response to this so far so i am super grateful i think i will do a separate video talking through all the details of it but this see off it just doesn't do it justice but this right here is the vivian halter um vivian as in vivian lee the actress that's what my well basically i've been a little bit obsessed on pinterest at the moment with all the sort of 50s 40s 30s even rockabilly style stuff and that kind of bred from there and um, it features these cute so it's a halter neck like this it buttons around the neck but this is doubled over so you do the button up and then you can't see the fastening which is quite a nifty idea if I do say so myself and uh, the windows are for your cleavage little flashy bit here um, it's very fitted it's got um, I recommend zero to minus two or zero to two negative ease the back is pretty basic, it's just like a little thing because the halter comes up at the front, so you've got an open back, it's got a twisted rib for the waist, it's meant to be cropped, it sits nicely, I'll show you at your uh, nice little double chin there, uh, at your waist, it's very fitted. Um, I will be putting up a testing call in the next couple of days if I haven't already, depending on when I edit this. Please keep an eye out. Um, it is going to be graded from sizes extra small to 5XL. Um, I've already had quite a lot of interest for those sizes in the middle, but if you are if either end, I particularly need your help. Um, please let me know if you'd be interested. I will be posting a Google form link um, on my Instagram this week. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what things that I've casted on in the month of March that I've yet to finish. So these will likely be finished objects for the end of this month, which is April. Um, right, so also I don't know if I, I've mentioned this on podcast before, but I'm hoping that I'll see some new faces. Um, this these little organza bags I get from my 101 orders from Love Knitting or Love Crafts, I think they're now called, um, and I use them to store yarn. I group all my yarn together like in weights in these bags and I also use them for projects. I just find them that they come anyway so I'm basically recycling them and they um, are just super good for keeping everything nice together. So I was on a bit of a designing binge, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek the next design I have on my needles. Okay. I know that looks really tiny, but again, it's got some negative ease and some severe waist shaping with the ribbing in the middle. It's going to be another top, a summery top. It's vintage inspired. I think I'm going to be calling it the Monroe halter as in Marilyn Monroe, pretty obvious I know. Um, I'm happy with how it's coming along but I have put it on hold until I have finished grading the Vivian halter which I hope to do this week and then I'm going to get back to this one. So keep an eye out on my grid for this otherwise I will pick it back up in my video at the end of this month. What else? Huh. Again, another one of my designs. This one is properly on hold now though, but I thought I'd give you a quick flash. Um, this 
lovely drop stitch pieces that only looks like a big rectangle at the moment is going to be a jumper and um, it's kind of a new and kind of an old design it's something I actually knit from my mum years ago and I just kind of made it up as when I went along I hadn't done any designing back then um, I didn't write any notes but my mum still wears it now she gets compliments on it all the time it's just kind of like a baggy jumper that you can throw on over outfits um, and I want one for myself maybe it will end up being a pattern um i'll see how it goes um i'll post some pictures on my grid when it's ready which will probably be in a couple of months to be honest um with it warming up i don't I'm not as keen on getting this finished yet it's more of like a autumn -y jumper um but i'll post it on my grid when it's done and you can tell me if you're interested in me writing it up or not but i'm taking notes just in case you want it um Sorry, I've got all my stuff right down here. Um, it's actually quite organised, had to get it all together. Okay, so another thing that I cast on in the... Well, actually, no, that's a lie. Okay, those two were cast on in the month of March. I decided to do this... Well, it's the 7th, 7th of April today, so I decided to do this a bit later than I would have done had I realised that I was going to be doing this format again. So this is something I cast on this month, but it's cast on and I thought I might as well show you because it'll be a finished object next month. So you may have seen already, as I mentioned, I test knit for Jessie May all the frickin' time. And this is the not sure how well you can see that. The racer back bra um so it features a contrast contrast molly i've lost my accent the contrast not contrast contrast racer back bra that's a bit of a mouthful um so my contrast color is blue the rest is going to be white and there are some duplicate stitch at the end that gives it a little thing so i this is actually nearly done um i'm almost done with one cup the back is done i've got another cup to do and then the straps and um, so that will be probably on the grid before i do the next video but keep an eye out for that it's a very exciting pattern um i really like the construction the way that you shape the cups is a bit different to um jesse's other designs i don't want to say too much if you're interested to get the pattern but it is beautiful and I'm very excited about wearing it. it. Actually, the white and the blue is making me think of Greece. Actually, this time last year around Easter, me and the boyfriend went to Greece for a week, one of the Greek islands, and spent the whole week on the beach. Pretty much no one there had the beach to ourselves, went swimming in the sea. It was gorgeous and just the colours, I guess it's the flag of making me think of, of Greek holidays. Um, and then and then one thing that I'm really excited about that I cast on last night is my first ever crochet project. So I show you. I'm so excited. I can tell um, So I learned to crochet last night with the help of a couple of my girlies. Um, thank you so much, ladies, for answering all my stupid questions. Um, I couldn't have done it without you, but I have made so much progress for me. So I am making the Not So Granny Cow by Natty Thread. Um, it's quite a simple pattern. It's like a, a big tube. Um, and it's really wide and you can wear it like a hood. It is fabulous. So I'm using that to sort of work on my tension and learn how to crochet properly um, because there is another crochet project that I'm learning to crochet specifically for that I'll talk about in a second. Um, these colours just make me happy. So one thing that I'm doing at the moment is all the projects that I'm making, I'm trying to pick colours that speak to me, that make me feel happy, that when I'm knitting there, I look at them and they genuinely make me smile. Because I think there's so many things to feel rubbish about at the moment. It's just nice to get that sort of lift in the day. Um, I think I'll have this done really quickly. Like I said, I started this last night. I've done a bit this morning and I'm already, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 rows. Oh, I'm on the 11th row and I think there's about 40 to 50 rows. So it shouldn't be that long. Um, once I balance it with a few other things. Um, I'm super excited. The only thing is I managed to twist it when I joined it, but I didn't realize until quite a few rows in and I'm not willing to frog. So this 
design has an accidental, um, accidentally on purpose, twist. It's a really large, like looking at the size of it, if I pop it on like this, so it's gonna go like this, and it's gonna be a hood over the top. So a twist really isn't gonna be the end of the world, it'll just make it sit a bit snugger. Um, so I'm quite, quite happy to just go with that, go with the flow on it. Um, but actually I'm gonna just say it's a chosen design element and that's the way I wanted to do it. So the thing that I'm really happy about with this project is that I am only using stashed yarn. So I have tons of bright colored DK yarn, that kind of like paint box style craft, all of that acrylic yarn hanging about, loads of random bits of it, ends from other projects. So I'm trying to incorporate as much of that as possible into this. Um, and I'm just really enjoying crochet. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. The, th the stitches themselves are quite easy. The one thing I found a little bit hard when I started was finding where to go into the chain. But after that point, because of the stripes, you're just going in between now, don't quote me on any terminology because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but you're just going like in between the gaps of the row below. So it's really easy to find. And um, you could say I am hooked. Had to go and get some more bits. Oh, So actually one thing that I have done in this apocalyptic world is cut my own fringe in. Um, actually, this is attempt number two pretty straight if I say so myself. Um, so the first time I decided to just go at it with uh, the boyfriend's clippers, I went <laughs> and they gave it kind of like a rounded look. Um, but every time I moved, I found more bits of hair that should have been cut that wasn't cut. Um, so when I washed my hair the other day, I decided to just neaten it up and level it off. I'm quite happy with it, actually. Um, I love a good fringe. Again, I said uh, with my designs, I've kind of been influenced by that whole rockabilly thing. Um, I used to dress vintage style, like 50 style all the time, like religiously. And I kind of fell out of it for a good few years. And now I can feel those vibes coming back. Pinterest is like influencing me massively. I'm a sucker for advertisement and all those suggested pictures and algorithms. And I've just gone down this one massive vintage hole. So I've gone Betty Page style. I'm hoping to find a balance this time. I like vintage shapes, the classic shapes. I find them to flatter my figure quite a lot, um, but I like modern colors, as you can tell. Uh, okay, so now I would like to talk to you about my plans for, I wanna say next month, but what I mean is this month, my plans for April. Um, as I said, I'm learning to crochet for one particular project, and that is my beautiful friend, Chelsea from Rose and Rose um, designed a crochet bikini and it is just gorgeous. She looks gorgeous in it, her testers look gorgeous in it, um, and I want one for myself. So this is the yarn I've decided to use. I'm using cotton, even though I hate cotton. Um, I'm hoping crocheting cotton isn't as bad as knitting with it. Um, I've gone for this tangerine, mandarin, orange beautifulness colour. Um, I can't get hands on, get my hands on my hair dye. So I'm getting orange in my outfit instead of orange in my hair at the moment. But my plan is to try and at least get the top made in April, once I've learnt, got my tension right with that other project. I have loads more designs planned, so I would like to get a few of those started if I have the time, although that may run... Oh, up, sorry. I had a cheese sandwich before I started, and it's repeating on me a little bit. Um, you're welcome, I am really good at sharing today. Uh, so, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I've got loads more designs that I want to start working on, they're all drawn out. Um, a lot of them have been written in very basic form. I've got the yarn for, but I just waiting for enough time to work on them. I don't want to work on too many things at once because then I never finish anything. Um, I'm not a big one for like believer in star signs and personality tests and all of those things together, but uh, even though they do interest me, but I did do a personality test once that told me that I'm really good with ideas and really bad at following through. And that definitely is a theme in my life. So I'm trying to focus on the two that I've got on the go at the moment. Once those are written up and in a position to be tested, then I will start the next one. So that may be this month or it may end up rolling into May. Lastly, things that I just want to make for myself, just um, that aren't test knits, that aren't designs, um, because I need to have fun too. 
are Poison Girls patterns. Again, that whole vintage vibe that I've got in my head at the moment. There's a couple that I really want to make. One is the Beauty School top. Um, which I have some yarn for, the Prima Donna turban, because I think that would look really nice with my fringe. Again, got the yarn for, um, and then there's a couple of, uh, I think the Rizzo tea. There's a couple of them that I really like that I want to start at some point. Hopefully I'll start one of those this month. Um, actually, why don't you guys let me know what are you planning on making? Now I'm going to talk to you about my stash acquisitions. So these arrived today. I put in an order with What Must Have Made um, a little while ago now, and it was for the most beautiful yarn I've ever seen in my life. I believe it's called Burt vs Joy, and this is the yarn. Yes, that was a dramatic pause because this is the most beautiful yarn I've ever seen. I just love it. I feel like if I had to do a drawing of or choose a colour for what my soul looks like, it's this right here. It speaks to me, it sings to me, it rocks me gently to sleep. I love this yarn. I love it so much. Um, it's four ply. This is for a design I have in my head, something that's really close to my heart. It's going to be a sweater design and that's all I'm going to tell you. It will probably be a couple of months before you see what that's going to look like, um, but it's gorgeous. I also got from What Must Have Made. this beautiful um, rose gold mohair. As I mentioned, I wanted to make a prima donna turban and this is the yarn I want to make it in. I think it goes really pretty um, with my hair and I really like it and it's pink and fluffy and gorgeous. It's unbelievably soft. Ooh, skin crown things that are all the rage at the moment. This would make a fantastic skein crown. Um, okay, I have more stuff on the floor to show you. So, last thing from um, what must, oh my hair's tickling me. Last thing what must have made, the wonderful Tracy of what must have made sent me some little extras with my purchases, some things I showed you before, things that I bought for myself. Um, Tracy sent me, amazing rainbow mohair. I wonder if she's got a name for them. Neon minis times five. It's 72% kid mohair and 28% silk. It is unbelievably soft. She knows me too well. I love neons, love, love, love. Um, I have to think of a really cool project to use these for. So if anybody has any good ideas um, for neon mohair minis, hit me up, comment below, DM me, message me on Instagram, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, it, I would greatly appreciate it. Oh, sorry, what hair on my nose. And she also kindly sent me, let me see if I can show you. Those beautiful stitch markers. There's a rainbow, a little ball ball with purple stars in it and a nice pink heart. They are gorgeous. I can't wait to use them. Um, so that's what I got from what Tracy, oh, sorry, what Tracy made. What Mustard made, which is Tracy, is, is the uh, genius brain behind it. And then, so this yarn I bought from Etsy from a German dyer, Piratenwuller. Um, Piratenwuller, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I think I mentioned before my boyfriend's German, I know a little bit of German. Uh, I slaughter it on a daily basis with my English accent, but what are you gonna do? I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, so yes, this beautiful yarn, the pinks and the purples, can you see a theme? There's so much pink. Um, do you know what? You wouldn't believe me. When I was younger, I was the biggest tomboy. Me and my sister, me and the middle sister, I've got two sisters, two younger sisters. Me and the middle sister 
because there's a big age gap between us two and, and the youngest, um, used to run away from pink. Like we wouldn't touch anything pink. We used to cut the heads off of Barbie dolls. Um, that's a bit psychotic, I know, but we did. And throw them out of her, out of her bedroom window. Um, but yeah, we hated pink. And now I feel like I'm making up for all my lost pink little girl dreams because um, I lived in football kits and tracksuit bottoms. Not a lot's changed mentally. I'm still a boy, but I like dressing like a girl. Uh, I say that because obviously girls can wear what the hell they want, um, but that feminine image is something that I enjoy now, even if I still like to climb trees and play football. Sidetracked. Okay, so one last, is there one more thing? Yeah, one last acquisition I want to show you. This one is not indie dyed. Um, this is the Malabrigo yarn. It's lace weight. And it's just beautiful. Um, I love it. It's silk. Um, it's, oh, it's a mixture, I think. 70% uh, al uh, baby alpaca and 30% silk um the color is arco iris again this is for a pattern i have designed in my head don't be scared i know it's lace but it's going to be on big needles so and also lace is so gorgeous when it knits up i know that's not a popular opinion or at least nobody can be bothered to make it but i promise you it's worth it um and also i like a quick project as much as the next person but why are we always rushing through to try and finish stuff and make, make so many things and produce so many things? Sometimes it's really nice to have a project that forces you to slow down, that you can just pick up and put down as you please and is a, is a longer term project, but then it's so beautiful at the end. Just some food for thought for you. Okay, finally, one last thing for you. I figured with everything going on at the moment, I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but it would be nice to say some things that have made me happy this past month that might make you happy too. So in January, I decided to start reading all the Harry Potter books again. Um, throughout the last month, I've been reading Harry Potter number five. Um, I am thoroughly enjoying it. It's Order of the Phoenix. Um, I have read most of them before, but I was a lot younger. Um, and that's bringing me so much happiness. I'm not reading loads because I spend most of my free time knitting, but a chapter here and there has really made me happy and given me some sort of childhood happy magic feelings. Um, so that's one thing I recommend, reading a book from when you were younger that makes you happy, specifically Harry Potter, but any it could be any book. Um, one thing I've been really struggling with is not being able to go to the gym. So I know that sounds so ridiculous and so many people have things way harder than I do. Um, but going to the gym really helps with my anxiety. It helps when I'm stressed. It's sort of the time that I take for myself during the day. I go most days of the week, I take a lunch break and go to the gym um, for the hour and I lift weights. And not being able to do that um, has taken away an outlet for me. So I have started doing yoga again. So I did yoga a really long time ago. I'm not telling you that you need to exercise, that you need to lose weight, or that, that I'm not doing it for any reason for aesthetics. If I get a bit, softer by not training this month not a big deal like your body's your body as long as you're functioning like and you're happy i mean it doesn't matter that aside um i've been using yoga with adrian which is a free yoga videos you can find on youtube they're really beginner friendly um i like her videos because she just kind of goes to the flow you have a little bit more creative room she's not super super strict or doing crazy positions that nobody can do or that no real person can do food food has made me so happy this month food is my love language i have been eating loads of food um i am well aware that there is um, issues with people stockpiling at the moment. We're trying to use up things that are in our cupboard that have been there a while. Um, I have mentioned before that I'm vegetarian and eat vegan a lot of the time. So we have tons of dried food and cans, uh, tins of things. So we're trying to work our way through that and getting experimental with cooking food. Um, one thing that I've really enjoyed is that I have a little foot spa. Um, so I gave myself a pedicure the other night. Funny thing is I used to hate I mean, hate, like, be sick, hate, like, puke, heave, if anyone came near me with their feet, I didn't even like my own feet. Um, and then one day, a couple of years ago, I had 
some mushrooms. And I had this weird connection to my feet where um, I just wanted to walk outside, I wanted to walk barefoot on the grass and ever since then I've had this, re this sounds so weird and airy fairy and floaty but it's true, this connection to my feet. So um, I gave myself a nice little pedicure but if you don't have a foot spa or something you can do at home, give yourself, literally you don't need anyone else to do it, um, providing you are able to reach. Um, if you're not, maybe ask a partner very nicely or a friend to do it for you, who is in your household, um, to gently massage your feet, run your thumbs on your arches. You'll be surprised about how much better it can make you feel. There are two programs, films that I want to talk to you about. One, I watched the Minion movie the other day and I was crying with laughter. So watch films that make you laugh and they're funny, like banana. Uh, I just love it, it's so funny. Um, and me and the boyfriend watched the Mandalorian series and I cannot tell you how much happiness it brought us. I am anxiously waiting for the second series. Every time little Yoda came on the screen, we both squeaked. Um, not kidding, both of us squeaked, not just me. Uh, and I just thought it was really enchanting and endearing and I really enjoyed watching an episode each night. Um, I think it's only eight episodes in the series, but it was it was fantastic. Lastly, the last thing I want to talk to you about is I follow a couple of accounts on Instagram that share good news only. So um, I don't know about you, but watching and reading the news can be this massive rabbit hole at the moment. I'll click on one article. I want to stay informed, but there was a point where I was reading it every second of every day, finding every article that I could, and it was just stressing me out and making me scared. So um, although I keep myself in the loop and occasionally read the actual news, I try to keep it to a minimum. And I've started following these accounts on Instagram. Um, I think one of them is called Good News Movement. There's, there's loads of them. If you just type in good news, you'll find some. But each day they share um, something nice that someone's done for other people or just good news that's happening all around the world um, or some funny videos that have been real mood boosters and I've been sharing those with family and friends rather than all the bad stuff. Okay, I think that is it. This is probably going to be a very long video, but I think figure it balances out. If I do them once a month, then I can get away with them being slightly longer. As you know, I can talk for England and I frequently do. Um, so, Thank you so much for listening if you made it this far. I would really appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, told your friends about this channel. Um, let me know if I could do anything differently, anything you want to see. So we're gonna focus on one video a month for now and anything extra is a bonus. Um, yeah, great. Okay, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day um, and I will see you at the end of April.